Hello, everybody. Howdy, and welcome to a brand new RPG Exploration Society. We are here teaching you the ropes of Savage Worlds from Pinnacle Entertainment, the fast and furious fun gaming system. And we are using the Deadlands setting to tell all of these tales and rules and mixtures of both. Uh, we have built some seriously fun characters with all of these fine folks. Uh, so check out the uh, previous, the, the first two episodes are all about character creation and some of the basic rules. And then last episode, episode three, we got into some gameplay and covered uh, quick encounters and uh, some other basic mechanics. So uh, if you're curious about any of that, go check out our YouTube. Uh, more on that later and more on the giveaway that we have a little bit later. But right now, let's go around and introduce my fellow society members who are joining me on this mission here. Hello, society members. Hello. Hi, Hello. Dawn. <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, Gnome. Hello. Hi, my name is Gnome, pronouns he, him, and I am here to play Charlie Warren, uh, who is a prospector, and it'll be my first time actually uh, throwing him in character. I'm, I'm pretty stoked. I'm super eager. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and I, I have to ask technically, because we had this working beforehand, your captions are not working now. Did you happen to minimize your Chrome window or something nope. to that effect? Nope. Okay. Okay. I have touched nothing. Interesting. Well, okay, we're just going to have to keep moving along. Don't worry about it. I'm certainly not. I'm certainly not worried about it. Um, all right, <laughs> continuing on. Let's talk to Nick. Hi, Nick. Hey, uh, I'm Nick. Pronouns they he. I'm by rogues. I'm here to play Danitki, my gunslinger. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited. It's going to be a fun time. Are my captions working? They no. are. Yes. They are. Oh. The good yeah, vibes it, are it, still there for me. <laughs> it it took a minute, but but they caught up to you and and they're there. So maybe maybe they'll come back for for you, Gnome, as well. Um, and uh, let's go over to Megan. Hi, hi, I am Megan, and uh, you uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I am playing Crystal Void, who is a witch, um, and. Yeah, yeah, that's that's about all about her. She has some friends, a friend. Oh, here he is, Franklin. Um, <laughs> yeah, Indeed. I'm excited to uh, jump back in with uh, Crystal. Very cool. Uh, and uh, Noir is out uh, this evening, so um, uh, they will be back next week for our finale. Um, but uh, go, definitely go check out the Noir Enigma everywhere on the socials uh, because they're really cool. Uh, so, yeah. Um, uh, OK, with that out of the way. Uh, my name is Dom Zook. I'm uh, executive producer, showrunner here at Saving Throw Show. I will be the GM um, for this Savage Worlds Learn to Play. So a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. Um, uh, there is a giveaway, and that giveaway is for a Savage World starter pack, which is which was curated by yours truly and features uh, a dice tray, an amazing dice tray by Norse Foundry. It has uh, Deadlands flavored dice, also from Norse Foundry. It has a sa saving throw wildcard tokens, which are are not in production anymore. Um, <laughs> I the so. Should I tell the story? I, I I must now. So I made a bunch of these tokens. Megan knows this. We have we have hundreds of these tokens, and we were going to give them out at conventions, and then COVID happened, and now I've got a bunch of tokens. We've we've changed logos and everything since then. So, um, so now you can win some. Uh, it also includes a Princess Bride deck of cards, which is beautiful. It's stunning. The artwork is is quite lovely. Uh, it also includes a suede core rulebook and a Deadlands Weird West core rulebook. The the uh, the hardcovers, um, you must be a North American resident to win. It also includes uh, a voice mod um, 
uh, license. So you can use the voices and stuff that you'll hear me uh, going into later when we get into gameplay. Maybe more prices will get added to it, but there are tons of ways to enter. Uh, enter. Um, all you need to do is hit exclamation point prize uh, or, or giveaway or something, and I'm sure it will pull it up. Uh, and um, uh, follow that link, and you can earn dozens of entries for the next week or so, I think. We're going to draw uh, next week during this show. So you're, you you should be here. You don't have to be, but you should be here. There are simple ways to earn an entry, like visiting our YouTube channel or checking out our wiki. It's very easy to do, free, no problem. Uh, there are also more complex systems, which can earn you a lot of extra entries, like turning in a thousand channel points, uh, which you get free just for watching, uh, becoming a Ko-Fi subscriber, um, will get you 60 entries, that alone. If you're already a Ko-Fi subscri subscriber, it's already done. You just have to click the button and it goes, oh, you're already a Ko-Fi subscriber, awesome. And if not, then you just go through the process and it goes, cool. Um, uh, we'll draw it live on our final episode, so be sure that you tune in for that. Um, and leave your email in those two so that we can contact you in case you're not here. Uh, saving throw like PBS relies on viewers like you over 90% of our income. I did the math comes from you. So, uh, shows like this just would not happen without your support and your Ko-Fi tips and subs go toward paying our cast, our crews, uh, material for giveaways, um, convention travel and a whole lot more. So, um, thank you for that. Additionally, nearly half of you watching also at I've looked at the analytics, I know, aren't subbed to our YouTube channel. What? Why? It's free. Go ahead, just sub to it. Like, you know, and then ring that bell, and then you're notified when we post new new videos, and then you can send them to your friends, and it's really cool. But we use YouTube, we use our YouTube subscribers and followers to uh, leverage sponsorships so that we can cut back on ads that we play during YouTube videos, and I can, like, stop talking about all of this ways to support us, you know. So uh, consider subbing up on YouTube. It's free. It's easy. Um, also consider supporting us on Ko-Fi and becoming a member of our Exploration Society. Use exclamation point Ko-Fi in chat for a link. It's quick. It's easy. And uh, you can also tip via Ko-Fi. Um, tips of $15 or more, you can send a toast that we will read live on air. Uh, and also, all members of the Exploration Society will get things like uh, mugs and t-shirts and pins and other things. Um, so uh, it's really cool. And your tips and subs on Ko-Fi also unlock in-game rewards, like stuff that's happening tonight um, for our players here. We've already unlocked one. Um, have we unlocked? Oh, boy, we've unlocked three now. Thank you so much, wow. chat. Okay. We are cooking with gas now. Um, thank you very much. So, yes, yeah, so if you sub up or, or uh, tip us on Ko-Fi, it goes to um, the fund. And it unlocks a bunch of cool things. You can use exclamation point unlocks to track where that's going and what we're unlocking. I have some particularly devious ones tonight. Or excellent ones. I mean, they're great. They're awesome. They're super cool. Uh, and you can sub or tip at any time. You don't have to wait for when we're live to do it. It's open 24-7. So if you're watching our videos on YouTube and you're like, you know what? I like these people and I want to support them. I want more of this. Just go to Ko-Fi. It's super easy. If we got 500 more people to back us, it's a lot. But if we got 500 more people to back us on Ko-Fi, we could produce more content without needing any additional support. So, uh, you know, if you want things like an ongoing Savage Worlds show or something like that, like... That's that's the goal. That's what we're trying to get to. 500 more new subscribers on Ko-Fi. Okay, having said that, <laughs> these episodes have been generously sponsored by Pinnacle Entertainment. Uh, I thank them very much for their ongoing support. They've been so good to us. So the pressure's off. You don't have to support us now because we got some outside support. But think of it. 
if you like what we do, consider a continuing pledge on Ko-Fi. It, it really does help. Uh, and with that, let's saddle up. Okay, first off, um, I'm going to dole out some bennies. So you each get three, except for Gnome, who gets one extra due to his luck edge. So give yourself three bennies each, and Gnome, you get an extra one. That should be on your character sheet on Foundry, if you're looking. Um, and remember, chat, if you sub on Ko-Fi or Twitch at any level, you can send a reroll to either the general player pool or to me. So just let a mod know if you do that, um, where you want to send it, or you can add it to your message on Ko-Fi uh, where you want to send that, um, that reroll. Um, and, oh, neat. Uh, thanks to chat, you all get an extra Benny. Ooh. So give yourself yet another Benny. So you should all have four now. Yeah. And Gnome, you should have five. And I also get an extra Benny. And I get one for each of yous. So I get five Bennies. I know oh. Noir's not here, but I'm taking one just as if they were. Uh, next, last week, uh, chat... Uh, unlocked the adventure deck. Um, and let me see. I I've got to go here over to this guy. And there's our there's our handy dandy map. And if I go to my adventure deck, let's see. There it is. Okay, so now um, I am going to deal you each. So, so let me talk uh, quickly about uh, at the adventure deck, which is an uh, an alternate setting rule that you can use um, for your games, and I think it's a really fun one. So, uh, you each uh, the players, uh, you all playing with me, each get one card, one adventure deck card uh, for as many ranks as you have. Then you choose one that you like. Uh, and you can use that one. Uh, the other two are just discarded. You don't you don't get to use those. Okay, so just choose one, and then um, the other ones you don't get. Uh, now, chat also unlocked a super speedy advance for you all, so you're all veterans now. Thank you again, chat, for that. So that's three ranks. So you're each going to get th three cards. Oh my gosh. Feel free to discuss amongst yourselves um, and let me know which one you choose. So here we go. I'm dealing you all. Um, wait, there we go. Megan's hand. And more. Okay. And you each get three. Okay. There you go. So if you, uh, those of you who are playing along in Foundry, if you click that link in the uh, in the chat it should take you to your hand and you should see what you've got and uh let's go around now and um why don't mm, gnome tell me what you got all right i got i think i got some good ones i don't know maybe they seem good uh ace I could play this card uh, instead of rolling to automatically succeed at a trait uh, roll with a single raise. Very cool. Uh, got That's bullseye. Nice. Uh, play after damage is rolled to double the total of a successful ranged attack. Okay. Okay. And enemy. Play on an enemy wild card in the first round of combat. You may not soak wounds from this from his attacks for the rest of this encounter. I'm, I'm wearing old prescriptions, so I, I can't read. Oh, no. <laughs> read <it very> well. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? I can read it uh, if it's, if it's yeah, hard. Yeah, do you mind? Sorry. Sure, yeah, no, yeah, no worries. It's so no worries. hard. <laughs> <laughs> I totally know what that's like. Um, Look, cosplay, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so truthful. The verisimilitude. Um, 
Play on an enemy wild card in the first round of combat. You may not soak wounds from his attacks for the rest of this encounter, but you immediately draw three adventure cards and keep one of your choice. You may play another adventure card this session. That's not too shabby either. Uh, which one do you think you want to go with? Uh, I think I got to go with Ace. I think I just need that automatic success. Perfect. Just in case. Okay. That seems simple enough great so um in foundry if you hover over that card you will see there's a play and a pass button um so when you want to play that card just hit the play button and it will pull it up in chat okay but otherwise okay. bullseye and enemy are you cannot use there there isn't a, a handy maybe there is in in uh, that i i don't know but i i haven't found a way to discard adventure card uh, cards yet in uh, in Foundry, so I'm sure next week I'll figure that out. <laughs> okay, uh, Megan. Yes. Uh, okay, I've got Adrenaline Surge, which is your hero gets to add gets an additional and immediate turn, including new movement. Holy cow! Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, contact your hero finds a friend or acquaintance. Who helps him in his current situation? Okay. Or okay. Epiphany, which is something you never understood before, suddenly clicks. You gain a D6 in any skill you choose for the remainder of this game session. Okay. What are you thinking? I'm thinking either Adrenaline Surge or Epiphany. Okay. Okay. Um, an extra turn can be pretty helpful. It can. But Epiphany can be great for... In and out of combat. True, true. So I think I'll go Epiphany. Okay. All right, Epiphany. So Adrenaline Surgeon Contact are off the table for you. Um, lastly, Nick, what do we have for you? Um, one that I definitely won't use, which is <laughs> Arcane Inspiration. Yep, sometimes that <laughs> happens, yeah. Add plus two to trait rolls made to activate powers for the remainder of this encounter, unless my power is just being really badass and suddenly <laughs> I just get a whole bunch of, like, plus whatever is just shooting, but I don't think that's what this card does. It's not, but you know, you know, I will, I will say, I will rule that yes, that that would give you a bonus to a trait roll, a plus two to a trait roll. Oh, that's a good one. I'll think about it then. <laughs> Gotta yeah. kind of rethink about this now. Deadly Blow, which I also wouldn't use. Play to double the damage total of a successful melee attack. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Extra Effort, which is play to add 1d6 to any trait roll. This roll may ace. Ooh. Uh, so I think I'm going to go Extra Effort because the roll can ace. Yeah. And there's always that chance. So. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right. Very cool. Thank you all. Um, let's see here. Oh, people are are tossing a bunch of uh, bonus giveaway entries into uh, <laughs> into chat. I'm seeing excellent. You are all getting a lot of uh, a lot of extra entries that way. Um, don't forget, you can enter our giveaway. All right. Um, chat also unlocked uh, some Deadlands relics for each of you. Um, I, I want to just say this. So very cool. Thank you, chat. I brought this on myself. I want to tell the GMs of Deadlands that you should note that relics are not just like, you know, a powerful magic item that is in some dragon's loot pile. It's not like just like a plus one suit of armor or something like that. Every weapon, device, and item is linked to a person or event, good or bad, uh, that transformed the very nature of that thing. They are rare, extremely rare, uh, and extremely powerful. Um, but I know that this posse can handle it uh, because there's also a lot of downsides that can happen when you have and use a relic. So take care when adding relics. Don't just add a relic because we added relics to everything. But it can make things a little bit more interesting. And they're all veterans now, so I thought, why not? So uh, let us know. What did what did y'all choose? 
well, I chose Sacagawea's walking stick, which um, I felt like was perfect for Crystal. Um, so Sacagawea, do you want me to like kind of uh, talk about it? I have yeah. the description here. Yeah, talk, talk, talk a little bit. What, what does it do? And, and maybe just briefly, how do you think Crystal got her hands on it? Okay, um, so basically it can be used as a weapon. Um, it, it's like like a two-handed weapon, um, and it's considered magical in, in regards to damaging creatures, or that's important. Mm -hmm. um, I get plus two to survival ro rolls, and um, it, it gives me wilderness walk, which is like... Um, it's, it's kind of like you, you basically step into the hunting ground so you can travel faster. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> super totally cool to do in Deadlands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, definitely not a problem whatsoever. Not a problem. Uh, and then it has a taint since it is uh, a walking stick. Um, and for this one, it grants, it basically gives me the curious and the loyal hindrance. Uh, and then for each week that I travel with this walking stick, uh, I have to draw a card from the action deck on a face card, an abomination of some kind has caught the sticks arcane scent and starts hunting the owner. And then on a joker, the abomination is definitely intelligent and a wild card. <laughs> so basically, oh, and taking the stick into the hunting grounds attracts unwanted attention from nature spirits and manatees alike. So... It's really helpful. <laughs> it is for me and you. Um, very cool. Very cool. Well, we might yeah. we might play with that next week um, in terms of drawing the card. But uh, this week, you just get you get a really cool walking stick. That's second like Jay's walking stick, and you can use it however you like. Yeah. Um, cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. Who, oh. Oh. Yeah. And did you want me to how how um, how yeah Crystal how you. Not getting yes um i think that she probably took it from someone but i don't know that she i think she she registered that it was important and uh, somehow but i don't think she knew quite what she was getting but i think she just kind of like i think she stole it <laughs> okay okay yeah. yeah yeah so um interesting so so people are looking for this um, and and probably. creatures, creatures are probably looking for this. Okay, all right. Fair enough. Show, yeah. <laughs> uh, who would like to go next? I admittedly did not do this homework assignment, <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot. What what page is this in the book? So this is this is in the uh, Weird West com uh, companion, actually, right? Uh, oh, yeah. That's why we don't have it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but okay. I. But but oh, I. Boy. I yeah. did say I did send those pages to you on on Discord. Yeah. All right, let me go pull that up then. Yeah, no worries. No worries. I uh took the eagle feather. Okay. Tell um, us about which, that. Which if I remember correctly, essentially makes you immune to fear. Uh on the downside, uh it makes you a target for um for people who basically want to put you through tests to determine that you're worthy to be holding the eagle feather mm -hmm. and uh backstory wise and say that it's been passed down in her family and um it's it's obviously there are a lot of things that we get from our families that we don't truly understand the meaning behind or to us it's just a relic or an heirloom but someone else will be like, that's worth more than that. So mm -hmm. uh, being hunted for it, I guess, or is the downside to it. But being unafraid is a, uh, a big bonus, especially when you're impulsive. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You you don't have any fear. Um, OK. Uh, all right. So, yeah. So it was handed down for you. That That makes total sense. All right. Um, Gnome's had about three seconds to look at something like 15 pages of relics. Um, <laughs> talk really slow for you, Gnome. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you want, Gnome, um, we could talk about 
you're uh, making your grandpappy's pickaxe into a relic. Um, uh, yeah, I'm cool. I'm co- that, that's what I'm kind of looking for. I'm like, ooh, is there like, I saw like a grave digger shovel. We could we could adapt there something. There's a elixir. We could we could definitely adapt one of those things into your your pickaxe if you like. Um, I'll let you I'll let you peruse, but know that you've got a relic coming and we're going to find out about Noir's relic also next week. So so there's no pressure for you to uh, need to need to do that. But um, let's go back to Foundry here. Um, All right. Okay, chat has. Unlocked a few. uh, A few extra things for me to play with. Thank you very much, chat. I appreciate it. Um, Wow. Okay. All right. We're three three unlocks down. We've got three unlocks to go. So if you are are feeling generous and and have money to spare, uh, please don't tip. If you don't, please use that money for food and shelter and things that you need. But we always appreciate um, uh, sending any anything our way it it really does help and we we supremely appreciate it uh remember any tips of 15 or more can send a toast and we have a few toasts in already so i'm going to do those really quick because we're about to get bonkers um five foot latina says we write at dawn mid-morning at the latest Definitely before lunch. <laughs> Thank you, Five Foot Latina. Yes. Uh, Bad Guy McBadface says, pew pew! Drop your pew pews in chat. Uh, Neva and Omar say, more Savage Worlds! We are campaigning for a campaign! Thank you so much. Very much appreciate it. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, there is a question um Hosokter asks how they do rerolls through Ko-Fi. Um, so if you're already a member of Ko-Fi, um, it, it doesn't let you do it easily. So you, you have to kind of be a new sub to do it. Otherwise, you uh, tip $15 and that will send a uh, and then you can send your message that way. So it, it only really works if you're subbing, if you're subbing for the first time on there. So hope that explains that. Um, All right. Thank you very much for those tips and back to the action here. Um, Okay, our party has advanced and we touched a little bit on this last episode, uh, but I want to talk about it because they've advanced a lot since we last spoke. So when we started last episode, all of y'all were novice, basically first rank, first advanced novice. Um, And... uh, um, oh, really quick before you leave Civil Savage 88, I am using you can't see it because they're green. That's cool. Um, but Civil Savage sent these awesome bennies with the saving throw logo on them. Uh, and they, it's just going to look like I'm not holding anything. Um, that's yeah, it looks like I've got a hole in my head now. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Megan's Megan's got some, too. Um, are those gone rogue? Uh, ones. You're muted. Oh, harbingers. Oh, I've been talking this whole time. Yeah, I was like, I got some too. Yeah, they're oh, harbingers nice. from yes. from Civil Savage because it's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Civil <laughs> Savage, for these. I'm using them tonight. Uh, okay. Um. So last last we spoke, y'all were novice rank. Um, and uh, you had not had an advance yet. Well, thank you to chat. You have um, advanced rapidly to veteran level. Doesn't happen like this usually, but let me explain kind of how ranks work. So there are five ranks in Savage Worlds. Different settings call them different things, but in general, they are novice, uh, seasoned, veteran, heroic, and legendary. You can think of these kind of like levels like in D&D, but it's a very basic sense uh comparison that between each rank are advances 
Generally, there are four advances per level, except for novice, where there are just three, because that first advance is literally your character creation. So you get everything that first that first level in uh, in novice, and then you have three more. And when you've done all that, then you become seasoned. Your next advance is seasoned. So when you advance, you can do one of five things. You can gain a new edge but you must meet the requirements of the edge, including the rank and any skill or ability score level. Right? Uh, you can increase a skill that is equal to or greater than its linked attribute by one die type. You could instead increase two skills that are lower than their linked attributes by one die type each, including new skills that the character didn't have before uh, you can buy those essentially at a D4. Um, or you could increase one attribute by a die type, but you can only do this once per rank. So uh, after character creation, you can't... I, there, there was some confusion last week by me about whether you could do this in Novice. Um, you can do it in, in Novice. You can use one of your advances to increase your... Uh, a ability score by one die type, but you can only do it once per rank. Um, or you could permanently remove a minor hindrance or reduce a major hindrance to a minor hindrance, if possible. Uh, now, as I mentioned, all of you lovely people in chat, you unlocked a basically super advancement for our heroes. I did this so that you could get an idea of how advancement worked, but uh, this is way too fast for advances to happen in normal games. So I just really quickly want to touch on kind of how uh, advances work in Savage Worlds, because I know people coming from D&D um, &D might be going like, well, there's no XP. Like, how do I know when to advance people and stuff like that? Um, uh, some handy tips. Base your advances partly on the content of your game and partly on the length of your game. Uh, if the party defeats like a big bad and uh, solves a, a huge problem or, um, uh, or, or, you know, like I said, de defeat some, somebody major to the plot or something like that, that might be enough for an advance. If you're playing weekly, Usually it makes sense to advance every three or four sessions. That's what we did in wild cards. We generally three or four sessions. Usually we would advance, um, but it was usually story driven. Um, if you're playing in a convention game, perhaps uh, it might make sense to allow one advance or no advances um, because you're only playing for three, four hours, maybe. Um, but if you want to sort of have that moment where the, players can kind of make the characters their own, maybe give them an advance. Uh, if you want to get your players' feet wet quickly, you can consider starting them at seasoned rank. This gives them four advances to play with, and uh, I usually build seasoned ranks, uh, seasoned ranked PCs when I run convention games. So like my Savage DuckTales game, they were all seasoned. Um, Savage Indiana Jones, they're all seasoned and stuff. Um, okay. That's basically it. Okay. All right. All right. Seriously, back to the, back to the action now. Um, when last we left, you heard someone run off before you could grab them. And uh, they've hopped on a horse. And Crispin implores you, if you want answers to all of your questions, we have to go follow that person. I've got a wagon hitched out out front. I I, 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 I can take us all. Let's go. I and, don't need no wagon. Okay. I, I figured as much. Uh, she offers you, any, any of you can go with, with, um, with Crispin. Uh, I know Denitki will, will go on their horse, but uh, however you want to split this up, this is going to determine your placement in the chase. So who's, okay. who's going with Crispin and uh, who, if anyone is Denitki going to allow to ride with them <laughs> or who wants to go on foot? It's not going to, you are not going to avail uh, much by doing that, but um, Run really fast crystal. <laughs> 
like, I got no. a mule. <laughs> I will say no, noir noir is going to ride with Crystal. Um, the horses, uh, uh, your horse uh, Tohatki is not interested in having anything to do with noir uh, with with a fellow. Um, but the horses uh, attached to the wagon, the wagon is far enough away from them. They and as they get running, the smell goes downwind, so they're they're not uh, they're not as troubled by um, a fellow. But uh, that's how that's split up. I have a question, Dom. Is there yeah. a hindrance for having someone else on my horse? Um, there. There isn't. I'm. I'm certainly not going to apply a hindrance to you for for having that. Your your horse can easily carry. You don't have an El Chipo horse or anything like that. So your horse can easily carry two people. The one thing I will say is that your horse will tire out sooner, um, because of that. However, um, in this chase, I don't anticipate you going all day and all night, um, okay. like that. So yeah. So no no negatives. But yeah. Uh, we we could we could play with those, but I'm not going to. <laughs> All right, Crystal, Charlie, where are you going on this? Um, Crystal. <laughs> so okay, here is my question for you, Dom. Before I make this decision, with yes. this walking stick, I have wilderness walk. Yes. And my thought is that she would use wilderness walk so she can do less work and just pop in in front of them and make them stop. However, I know we're running a chase and I don't want that to cause a problem <laughs> for the chase. <laughs> End of chase. Okay. Yeah. Real quick, with wilderness walk, um, uh, what does that... So you can just at will go into the hunting grounds. So it says, um, uh, hang on, I'm shorting, blah, blah, blah. After walking at least one mile in the wilderness, hang on, let me see where this says, it travels, shortening arduous treks and concealing his past. Shamans use this power to communicate with their allies, blah, blah, blah. Every three miles count as one. And the shaman's track leaves no trace. But you have to still activate it and it only lasts for an hour. Okay. Um, but you did, did it say you have to be already have walked in the... after walking at least one mile in the wilderness. So okay. I don't, it says GM's call. I don't know what that okay. part means, but easy, easy decision. You're not in the wilderness. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Glad I asked. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. Uh, uh, chase is over. Thanks, Megan. Um, great. <laughs> So I hope you all learned how to do a chase. Uh, we're flanking. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So you're way ahead, but we're not getting to you yet until you, um, we get to the end of the chase. Uh, I, I do want to send out a big thank you to uh, Salieri C. Um, I, uh, I was silly and I didn't make a, a command for them, but they are the ones who crafted this uh, chase chart uh, that you can use in Foundry. Uh, and it, it's really cool, and it has the basics and the maneuvers so that everyone knows kind of what you can do. Um, so thank you. Uh, look them up. Salieri C, they have a Ko-Fi. Go support them. I did. Uh, and um, uh, Or find the GitHub uh, or the module in Foundry. Um, it's, it's, it's really, really helpful. So, so check that out. Okay. I get a lot of requests to cover chases, so uh, I'm going to try to uh, ex explain this. Uh, I will also, really quick, um, because you are going with uh, Crispin and you all have agreed to kind of do, in the, do this together, Crispin is now an ally. And real quick, allies are really simple to operate. The players you control uh, can and should control uh, your ally. Um, but they are a capricious lot because you are a capricious lot. Um, they only materialize if you've planned for them to, or I, the GM, says they're there. So take that into consideration. You can't just like be somewhere and then go like, oh, uh, Crispin's here too. Uh, that doesn't work. You have to announce that Crispin went with you, all that stuff. Uh, otherwise, they don't know what's going on. Uh, and it, it takes time 
for someone to help you and convince someone to help you, especially in the weird West. But once you do, you have an ally for life. Um, and allies are considered extras for uh, edge purposes and all that, everything else, not wild cards. Uh, but they can advance and take edges themselves, provided they survive long enough to do that. So Crispin is an ally. You can control Crispin. Uh, you can determine who wants to do Cr Crispin's stuff on um, on your turn. OK. Uh, all right. Um, so first, chases are a form of dramatic task where the distance between groups is dramatized and mechanized. First, you will shuffle an action deck, just your regular deck of cards. Uh, just note that you're going to need a separate deck later for actual actions during the chase. Uh, and lay out 9 to 10 of these cards. These are your chase cards. Each of these represents an increment of ranges, and those increments depend on the type of chase that you are having. So going after someone like we are on horseback, this is similar to uh, like a foot race or something. That it's the the increments are much smaller. So every card represents an increment of five. You can consider that five feet, five yards, but it's five. Okay, an uh, an airship um, to follow the steampunk theme would be something like a twenty five increment level. Uh, this is based on the typical weapons that you would use in. Uh, in these events, uh, and it gives ranged weapons basically a shot at trying to take someone down or stop them in their tracks. Now, on top of these cards, place a token of some kind to indicate each person involved in the chase and their relative position to one another. And I'm, I'm going to place cards in a second. Um, so, for instance, if a bank robber takes off on a horse, uh, he's going to get about 20 increments away, or about four cards um, from the posse before they're able to give chase. All right. If for any reason there was someone who was already on horseback, they might be closer, maybe only one card back from the robber. Uh, but whoever is last always takes the number one card slot, the, the back of the heat. Basically it goes from left to right. Left is the slowest, right is the fastest and furthest away. Um, so whoever is last is always going to be that, that, leftmost card i'm you're probably looking at me and this is the leftmost or this i don't know anyway um <laughs> now you will dole out action cards just as you would if you were in a fight um note that if everybody here was on foot or everyone was on their separate horse or anything like that they'd each get a separate action card but if say the posse decides to give chase together on a wagon then they all act on the same action card. And when their card comes up, they can decide which one of them goes first that round. Basically, if you have a group uh, that's all using the same conveyance, they all act at the same point. But if they're all on their own, they each act individually. Um, so let me dole out cards here. Handy dandy chase setup. Here we go. Number of cards to draw, 18. Let's do this. Boom. Okay. So the top cards in our set represent um, uh, the, um, um, the action deck. The bottom represents the uh, chase card line. So um, your bad guy is about here. And uh, I will say, Dinitki, you quickly hop on your horse, and so you're a bit closer. Uh, everybody else, this is this is uh, Crispin. Everybody else is back here uh, on this jack, okay? Um, and then you have your action cards above your cards here. All right, so uh, uh, everybody on the wagon is a six of clubs. Danitki, you're an eight of diamonds, and our um, our horseman at the at the front is a four of spades. Okay. Um, now, on your turn, there are a few things you can do, and turns in combat in Savage Worlds generally go uh, in uh, 
card value and uh, card um, suit order. Um, and, and the suits are in alphabetical order, reverse alphabetical order. So, uh, <laughs> oh man, trying to remember all of these things. So spades, um, oh God, what are spades? Let's see, spades, clubs, hearts, and diamonds, diamonds, right? Okay. So spades first, hearts second, diamonds third, and clubs last all right and then in in order so if you have a a five of spades and a five uh and a four of spades then the five of spades would go first and then the four of spades okay um so in in the order that we have here uh Denitki, you will go first because you are a no the spades the spades will go first um wait Am I doing that right? I'm not doing that right, am I? I think it's what are you trying? No, it's the number. The number is first, and then yeah. and and then the the suit. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's been a minute. So the number goes first. So Daniki, you are first. Then it's everybody in the wagon, and then it's the horseman. So eight six four. Okay. Um, but there are some. Funky things that I do need to mention. Um, on your turn, you can do um, a, a few things. You can attempt to board, which is basically jumping onto a vessel. If you wanted to jump from your the wagon onto the guy's horse, you can try to do that. Um, the only thing is in a foot race, you obviously can't do that. You could jump on his back, but you know, that's not really <laughs> the intent. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you can try to board, um, you can try to change positions. This is, uh, basically moving up is a free action. Um, uh, so moving up is a free action, but if you choose to spend an action, you gain plus two on your roll. So, um, so you can change positions, doesn't cost you anything, but if you want to commit it to an action economy, you get a plus two on that roll. Okay. So basically you're focusing 100% on moving forward. Um, dropping back is a free action. Uh, you can't drop back beyond the end of the, the line, essentially, uh, Roll the requisite maneuvering skill. So if you were running, for instance, you'd roll athletics. If you're on horseback or on a wagon, you'd roll riding uh, in a car or tank. You'd roll driving in a boat. You'd roll boating. But when was that ever going to come up? Oh, it will. It will come up. Um, but not right now. On a success, you move up one. On a raise, you can move up to two. If you're faster than the fastest rival... Like if you have the fleet footed or free runner edges, which none of you do, uh, you can add up to plus two, depending on how much faster you are. OK. Um, and by faster, I mean your pace level essentially is is faster. Um, evade uh, melee and ranged attacks against you are at a minus two until the start of that vehicle or person's next turn, including anyone on the same vehicle. OK, so Crispin's got the cart and decides to do an evade maneuver. Then all of you on that cart, anyone who tries to attack you will be at a minus two. Um, there's the flee action. If you have at least four chase cards between you and a pursuer, you can make a maneuvering roll to escape. This roll is made at a minus four. It's a minus two if you have at least five cards between you and a zero if there are at least six cards behind you. You're just basically so far ahead, it's no problem to, to lose your pursuer. Um, there's the force action. You can attempt to force someone off their vehicle or into an obstacle. It's Again, it's opposed maneuver rolls. If the attacker wins, they bump the other one and bumps are basically they move an opponent one chase card in either direction. So you could move them back towards you or you can move them forward. So you could like use this as a 
push to get someone a little bit further ahead if you want to. It's not just about pulling people back. Um, you could use other skills to put obstacles in the path. Um, oh, I should say, uh, a raise on the, on the action uh, is treated as if the opponent rolled a critical failure. Okay? You can use other skills to put obstacles in the path, like maybe shooting down a, um, a load of crates from a crane that smashes in front of the person trying to run away and prevents them from getting out. But a crit failure here means that they likely block your way instead. So if you crit fail using a different skill for this force, it, it's going to be bad for you. Uh, you can hold steady. You ignore any unsteady or running penalties. But, in essence, you are vulnerable, and attacks against you are at a plus two. But, uh, a note that this doesn't stack with the vulnerable condition. So, we haven't really run into that yet, but it doesn't stack. And lastly is Ram. You can run into your opponent via an opposed maneuver roll, only if you're on the same chase card. This And this will do damage to both of you. Um, but, it can stop them. Okay, uh, there are complications, and I mention the complications because we have one right now. If a character or group draws a club as their action card, something goes awry. The chase card determines any modifier to the roll on the complications table. Thought that might happen. Yeah, so if the... Um, unfortunately, the way that this system is laid out in Foundry, uh, I can't replace cards... But if we were at a table or some other way, um, the I would allow you all to spend a Benny to essentially redraw an action card. But unfortunately, if, if I do that, it's going to redraw all of the action cards. Okay? So, um, that's that. Um, that's the, that's chases in a nutshell. Okay, so it's 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 combat, but you're moving too. You have you have distance to to contend with. So, uh, Denitki, you are first. What would you like to do? And don't forget to check out those maneuvers that are on on the card. Let's see here. Um, I would like to move up closer to him. Um, okay. So you want to do a... Um, uh, you want to change position, basically. Yeah. Are you uh, committing this to be your action? Or, um, or do you want to do something else on your turn, like try and shoot him? Can I try and shoot him? I don't want to move up to be the same as him, if that's a choice. I just want to be like the card behind him yeah so you can roll and um if you succeed you you can only move one anyway but if you get a raise you can move up to two you don't have to move two okay. but okay. you can choose up to two um so uh um so if you're doing this as a free action then uh make a writing roll for me and you don't get a you don't get a bonus to this So, okay. This is with the... What do you mean by no bonus? You mean like there's no plus two? Cause there's, there's no plus two because yeah. it's because it's a free action. You're not you're not committing this to an action because you uh, want to shoot two. Eight. Eight. Okay, great. So that is a success with a raise. So you can move up to two if you like. Um, I can do that and shoot him? Yes. I would like to do that. Okay. So you are now on the same card as them, and uh, you want to shoot them, so uh, give me a shooting roll. Okay, let's see here. Oh, that's even... Let's see. It's after all of those... Um, of that progression we did, I'm like, oh, wow, th these are big dice. As opposed to what I was rolling before. Um, nine. 
Uh, wow. Okay. Um, that is a success with a raise. So, um, give me your damage, which I believe is 2d6 plus one for your, your Colt, plus add another d6 for damage from the raise. Five and four, nine, ten, and then one more d6? Yes. Six. Sixteen. Was that, so, uh, was that a six on the die? Yeah. So you can keep rolling can that. Damage, can, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that damage rolls could ace. Okay. Damage oh, rolls yeah. ace, absolutely. Okay, plus another three. Okay, so what's that total? Nineteen. Nineteen. Nice. Wow. That is really good. I get a D12 for shooting now, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's going to help a lot. Um, okay, my guy needs to soak. Um, let me see. He's going. He is going to spend a Benny uh, to soak, and then I'm going to make a... Uh, Vigor roll here. I'm going to roll one more time because he's actually a wild card. Okay, he rolled a five. So let's see that you rolled a 19. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that is. Let's see. See, that is a success with a raise, with a raise, with a raise. <laughs> is that another raise? At which point do you just grow wings and fly away? <laughs> yeah. Nine. There's a raise calculator. I don't know how to use the raise calculator. I barely oh, I figured out how to use. What's the uh, what's the target number? Five. And 19 was the total? Yeah. It's three raises. Okay. Okay, so um, that's three raises. So you have shaken and wounded. He would have three wounds. However, uh, he has uh, soaked one of those. So he's only got two. Mm. Um, so he's still up, still writing, but, ooh, you, you're, you like pulled up right next to him and just drew and shot. And it just like went right into his gut and you see him and he, his eyes are bloodshot and wide. And you see what looks like probably tears kind of streaming down his face, but his eyes are open and the whites are completely surrounding his his pupils. So he just has this kind of crazed look on his face. Uh, and he looks kind of like a kid, honestly. And um, you just do a gut shot and, and he like screams, but he keeps writing as hard as he can. Yeah. I like to think that I rode up just right next to him and just point blank shot him without saying anything. Yeah, basically, basically. Now I will say uh, generally point blank shots would affect the parry rather than um, uh, the standard target number of four because they have an opportunity to hit your gun out of the way and stuff like that. But uh, I'm going to say that because you are riding and you have essentially five feet or five yards or whatever between you within this chase card, uh, I'm going to say that you're far enough away that you don't, you're not going to run into his parry. So, um, we're doing that. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, I had a little soak button that I could have used too. Um, thank you, Salieri C, for that. That's that's really cool. I also want to thank uh, um, uh, Blind Seer, I believe. Blind Seer tipped us uh, 5,000 bits, which is amazing. Oh. Um, uh, thank you so much. The bits also go towards unlocking our goals. So we now have four goals unlocked. And uh, I have more things to play with. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Um, uh, all right, moving on. Um, it's our people in the wagon. 
wagon people. The wagon people. And uh, you are at a disadvantage because you are, um, you have clubs. So um, don't fail. Great. <laughs> no pressure, though. <laughs> um, so if we want to move... Like we we are we taking like one turn to do that? How does that work exactly? Oh, you know what? Hold on. There's a whole complications table here that I need to oh, roll okay. because that's what that's what these cards do. I'm sorry, I'm not reading chat. If you're yelling at me, there's a complications table you gotta do. So mm. if you have clubs, then uh, something something bad has already happened uh, to you oh. all. So a complication occurs. And I need to pull uh, the complications here. Um. No, chat. You are very awesome. None of you said that. <laughs> I know our chat. I, I I always do that, and our chat's like, "What? What the hell? We've never ever." <laughs> game you yeah thank you thank you because we have repeatedly said don't backseat game and you have listened and i appreciate that okay um all right complications a character faces a complication if his action card is a club on his turn he must make a maneuvering roll as a free action the suit on his current chase card not his action card determines any modifier to the maneuvering roll and the results of failure okay so who is going to make this maneuvering roll? Oh, you I can, see, I you, can okay. you can, you can dictate um, that it be Crispin, your ally, if you wish. Uh, I mean, it's basically going to be a trait roll. Is that right? It's 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 a writing. It's going to be a writing oh, roll. It's, it's going to be a writing roll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I shouldn't make that roll. I mean, it's. Yes, it's a maneuvering role, and and uh, to because it's a uh, so this is probably going to be Crispin, all right. So okay. I, I'm just going to roll for Crispin, um, and you are the card you are on is a spade, so um, uh, then that means that. <laughs> uh -oh. <sighs> all right, so the modifier when you have a spade is you basically treat it as a critical failure on a maneuvering roll. So you have an automatic critical failure. So Crispin just right out of the gate, um, uh, snaps the reins and the horses start running and you see Daniki just run straight out and just, um, hop onto hotkey and, and is gone. And, um, Am I pronouncing that right? The, the horse's Tahatka, name? Tahatka, yeah. Tahatka. 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 And, uh, yeah, they're gone, and um, you see gunfire go off and stuff, but uh, they're, they're still cruising out. Crispin, on the other hand, oh, no. goes like this, and the horses just stay put. No. And they're not moving. Come on, you old... Bags, get going! Get gone! Why aren't you going? Th the, this is why you don't ever trust a horse. Can I jump off and go ride my mule? <laughs> <laughs> you can, yes. Well, Gary's all reliable. <laughs> and Crispin forgot to release the emergency brake. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, yeah, Charlie, you've got a mule. Um, uh, and, uh, you can hop on your mule. What's your mule's name? It's Gary. Gary. Gary, <laughs> Gary the mule. Um, will Gary <laughs> meet Canary? I don't know. Uh, Gary the mule. Yeah. So you hop on Gary. Okay. Um, unfortunately, Gary can only hold one person. Um, especially... Uh, you, Charlie. Um, that's that's. I'm a lot of a person. Yeah, to be that's, honest. that's all. That's all. That's all. Gary can can handle. Um, but it handles you very well. Uh, so Crystal and Othello, you are kind of stuck on the wagon right now. It's not going anywhere, but you you can still do things 
um, uh, even though you're you're far away. Okay. Mm. Um. I mean, I'm not going to be able to catch them on foot. Uh, so it seems like the best thing to do here would be to try to get the horses to go. Can I can I try and see if um, what do I have? Yeah, if I can use something to get them moving. Um. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. I will use your spider legs. Scare them. Scare them. Yeah, I know. I'm like the only thing I can think of is scaring them, but that doesn't seem like the best idea. Um, yeah, she's gonna get off uh, and kind of go over and 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 go up to the horses and and start talking to them and kind of looking at all of their uh, just everything, the ropes and things that are on them. And um, yeah, she's gonna try to essentially slap the back of one of them and see if she can get them going. Okay. So you're you're hopping off the wagon to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, what if they leave you behind? I know. Okay. She she wasn't thinking it through there, but uh <laughs> Okay. Um uh what do you want to roll for this? That's a good question. Um I guess athletics. You know what? I don't know that I I'm, I'm gonna have you roll persuasion. Okay. You're trying to persuade oh, the horses sense. to go. I am. Because I, like I don't okay. think it makes sense for you to like, you know, I don't know, slapping them. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Come on, horse. Uh, ooh, I aced it. Nice. That's what I needed. Yeah, that was a six. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so yeah, you, you slap the horse and go... What do you say to them? Uh, uh, um, I, I probably just slap them and go, get out! And, and kind of screech at them. And then <laughs> if they go, she tries to, she probably puts two and two together and tries to grab onto the cart. Okay, yeah. Um, they start to move slowly, but they're moving now. Um, okay. Very good. Come on, Franklin. Very good. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Ready. You've, you've, uh, you've hopped on Gary. I'm going to give you that as a free action. Um, oh, thanks. But, uh, what, what would you, what would you like to do? You are now on Gary. You have, you have several maneuvers that you can do. Um, yeah, Gary, got to giddy out. Let's go. Got to move. All right, so you want to change position. Uh, yes. Do you want to make this an action, or is it your free action? Do you want to do something else this turn? Oh, no, I just, this is going to be my action. I'm really far behind. Okay, <laughs> give me a writing roll at a plus two. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, writing roll, writing, writing. There we go. Writing... Plus two. By the way, this music provided by Zach Heidi. This is our wild cards action music. Go, Gary, go. All right. Hit that roll button. Whoa. Okay. That is a 14. That is a success with two raises. Right? Is that what that's trying to tell me? No, there's got that's more than that's that's more than a success with two raises. Um, oh wait, or is it? Four um, plus four plus four. No, that's two raises. That's a success with two raises. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm getting it, guys. It's coming back to me. Success with two raises. Very good. You can move up to two spaces. So, would you like to move two spaces? Yeah, let's go. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go fast. Gary yeah, takes Gary's off. old, but Gary's reliable. Unlike horses. <laughs> so you take off on Gary, and Gary, Gary, easily outpaces the horses for now, um, and that's it. 
Uh, okay. So next round, I draw new cards. And uh, everybody gets... There's basically going to be new cards for your... Um, for the chase cards and new cards for the action cards ahead of you. Wait, it didn't change anything, did it? No. Doesn't look like it did. I hear it. Like, I hear card noises. It changed two of them. Okay. Uh, I'm just I'm just going to reset the cards and and redraw them. Uh, fair enough. There we go. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> Why? Yes. So you have a complication. Uh. So let's see. It is going. Uh. Um. The back of the heap is going to go first. Then Charlie. Then um. Guy on horse who actually didn't have a turn. I realize now. Um, let me let me let me do a writing roll for them really quick. Um, That's not good. Let me roll one more. Oh, so he got three on both die. So um, not moving forward at all. So they stay they stay at, at that level. They stay at that distance. Uh, OK. Um, all right. Back of the heap, Crystal and Crispin. Um, you can, and Othello's there, but Othello's not helping right now. <laughs> Othello's um, it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so Crystal, you control Crispin, so you can decide if you want her to go first or if you want to go first. Um, I guess I'll let her go first since I assume she's still driving. Crystal is, yes. Yeah, I'll let her go first. Okay. Uh, let me get... I realized the music was a little quiet for folks, so you weren't quite hearing it as much. So I turned it up. should hear it now. A little bit better anyway. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. That's a success. So uh, she got a six. So she is moving one up. So you're all moving one up. Okay. Oh, actually, no, she got a success with a race because that's all she's doing on her action. So you are actually moving two up. There we go. Okay. Uh, you, you have now quickly caught up to Charlie, which makes sense. You've got a couple of horses on, on him, so... <laughs> 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 Makes sense that you'll catch up. All right, Crystal, what uh, what would you like to do next? Oh, you should still oh. be there. What? Oh no, wait. Suddenly, no, I, I don't. I don't see. It. Yeah. Where's gnome? Where's gnome? Oh, weird. Where's gnome? <laughs> I mean. I can. I you can, can. You hear can see. You. I can't. I can't hear or see, which means that they are oh. not not in the uh, in the overlay. That's weird. Did you did you all I run over? Run over with the wagon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um. So. Should have uh, spent some 
the money on a horse. Instead. Gnome, if you can hear me, um, try logging out and then back in again. Hang, hang up and come back in again. There we go. There we go. That that was weird. Dom, you uh, for me. Huh? That's weird. The yeah. music was just too hardcore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I upped the music and suddenly it kicked it kicked Gnome out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um uh all right, Crystal, you are up. Okay. Um let's see. I guess I mean I heard gunshots, but my thought is we're attacking. I'm a little hesitant to attack though with uh Crispin here in the cart. Um, let's see, I, well, could I, uh, that's not how it works. Crispin says, you look creepy. If you can do something creepy to them, like, I won't mind. <laughs> she says, <Yeah>. thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I guess I'll, I'll try to shoot a bolt. I guess this seems this seems dangerous, but um, yeah, I'll try and do that from here. So this is my howling arrow, yes. um, which is sort of like uh, this black smoky raven type thing that just comes diving out at. I love it. I, make I guess the guy make a, a spell casting roll um, at a minus two because you are on an unsteady platform. Whew. Okay, spell casting. Where are you? D10. Okay. Minus two. Ugh, that'll be a three. I'm gonna spend one of those bennies and try that again. Ah! I got the same thing! You know what? I'm gonna spend another benny, because why not? Okay. Don't forget, you wow. all have uh, currently. Is it the same thing? No, it's worse. <laughs> Oh no. oh, no. How much worse? Not that much worse. Okay. What did you say? We also have... Oh, we also have those action... Yes. Oh, that's not going to help me. Well, you, okay. you, have okay. your, you have your adventure cards. Don't forget about your adventure cards. But you also yeah. have uh, uh, four re-rolls um, from that chat has given you based off of subs. So oh, th thank you. Understand. Thank you to all of you. Yeah, um, thank you. I also, real quick, um, Blind Seer, thank you for thank you for the tip. And uh, from the Jabberwocky, beware the Jubjub bird and shun the frumious Bandersnatch. Mm. Words to live by. Thank and you. I live by that. <laughs> thank you, Blind Seer. Thank you very much. All right. I got it. So five. I did it. Got a five. Okay, excellent. Roll me damage. And I'll remind chat, we have two more unlocks. Uh, I got six. You got six. Okay, so that is a success. Um, and they are, oh, they couldn't ride because they were shaken. <sighs> well, that's fine. They didn't get anywhere anyway. So they're still shaken. Uh, and let me see. Uh, they're just going to take the damage and um, they fall off their horse and mm. perfect timing. Uh, we. Um, Is the chase over? Do I not have to deal with the negative consequences? Of you having don't. Clubs? So you don't have to deal uh -huh. with the negative consequences. So chases are <laughs> over uh, in general. Um, chases are over when the, uh, pursuer has either caught up to the, um, person that they are tracking or the, uh, the one being pursued has escaped. Um, in this instance, you have taken out this, this person, they have fallen off their horse, so they can no longer advance. So the chase is over. So, uh, very well done. Um... Congratulations. You didn't even have to walk in the wilderness. 
to do it. <laughs> um, fantastic. Okay, so... Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, you, you stop and Crispin kind of pulls, pulls the reins and yells, whoa, and the, the horses kind of slow down and, uh, she, she stops the wagon, jumps out and ties it around a tree. You all kind of look around to where you are and, and Charlie starts, com comes trotting up on Gary <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit after everybody else, but, but Gary made it, Gary made it. Um, and, uh, uh, you kind of, um, look around and you're surrounded by rock face by, by tall cliffs. The woods are basically kind of behind you. These are the woods that were surrounding the town. So you, you were riding out through town. Uh, and then once you got out of town, you got right into the forest. Essentially, this is, this is, um, untamed Utah. So, um, even now Utah has a lot of, uh, of land, especially in the mountains that's, um, covered in, uh, uh, overgrowth and and uh and trees these are old old forest trees so these these are um these are big and and leafy and it, they almost give you the the feeling of being enclosed in here and um you you are kind of have run and chased um this person into a corner essentially um and um Crispin uh runs up and looks at him and I I know I know him. This is a this is Denton James. He's 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 just a kid. He's the he's a I don't know, he's like eighteen or something. He's he's from Gumption. Okay. He and uh, and you look at him, and um, he has like this kind of sandy blonde, um, wispy hair, and a baby face. Um, but his eyes, those eyes, are piercing, and he is screaming in agony. And um, it seems like he's screaming not just because you shot him, Danitki, but um, he's he's just. It's it's a primal scream that's coming out of him, um, and he starts kind of frothing at the mouth, and he looks at each of you and and just says, "He is coming, he is coming." Who? Cool. And as he says that, he starts turning red. And the veins are popping out and his eyes or his skin goes from red to a purple. And the, the froth at his mouth is just filling up and going down his sides and falling on the ground. And he's bleeding out of this gut wound. And he looks at each of you one more time and then his eyes roll back in his head and he collapses. Yes, Franklin, I do think he's dead. I, I don't know that he is necessarily, necessarily, but, but he looks dead. Looks dead. Looks dead. I, I can't see him. I can't see him anyway. 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 I think he's dead. I think you have to turn Franklin around so he can see. Franklin, you're looking the wrong way. Oh, oh, right, 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 over here. Over here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Definitely dead. Definitely dead. Um. Yeah. He's definitely dead. Well. Um. What? Uh, what? What do we think any of that was about? I mean, Crispin, it was you who uh, told us to go after him, and now he's unfortunately dead. 
and he's given us a very dark warning. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I didn't think it was going to go this far, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know him uh, just like an, an acquaintance level, I suppose, but um, he uh, he was maybe 18 and he thought he would strike it rich in the mines near here and I don't know. His family is uh, is is old Gumption family. They they've been here for a long time, and they're all miners, but all unsuccessfully. Uh, Denton, on the other hand, was sure that uh, uh, he'd he'd find the mother load of some kind. I I, I don't know. <laughs> One day, Denton came to town, and he was like boasting to high heaven that he had fa had found something so significant that Halstrom himself would look on in envy. He convinced some others to go join him, and uh, they all headed back to work the mine. And, uh, I don't know, weeks, maybe a month went by, and then only Denton came back. And it was weird, but, you know, most of those miners were drifters that had come into town. We we thought they had just left, and there wasn't anything to work. But, uh, Denton was still feeling like he could find something. He looked haggard. He looked older. He wasn't the fresh-faced youth that uh, I remember. He, he recruited more folk, and they all went back and left again. This happened for a few months, and, and sometimes others would come back, but every time they did, they looked gaunt and, and weathered and sickly almost, and most of the ones that came back were ones that had families or, or something. I don't know. Now, I'm no seer or shaman or nothing like that. But I'm going to guess that it may not be riches that your boy found in those mines. Mm. I would quite agree with that assessment, yes. Um, Crispin kind of looks over the body, but this is, I mean, I've never seen anything like this. This is, this is insanity. What, can, what, what could do this? Can I look closer at the body, like maybe using, um, a cult or something of that nature to see if I can... I will, um, you can do uh, a notice or medicine. Um, Let's see. Um, or I'll do notice. Notice, okay. Does anybody else want to look or support Crystal? I will support. Okay. Okay. All right, so let, let Daniki roll first. What are you doing? Uh, notice. Okay. Four. All right, Ooh. that's a success. So you get a plus one on this roll. Thank you. Ooh, I aced it. Nice. Yes. Um, so that is a nine, ten with the additional plus one. Thank you. Ten total. So that's a success with a raise. So you look over um, Denton's body and you kind of part back his shirt, kind of look at his collarbone, and you see sort of these veiny tendrils that kind of stretch out down his neck and around his face. And um, you would say that this looks very similar to Ghost Rock Fever. Mm. Ah, uh, what is it exactly that they were mining there? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I imagine if he felt Hellstrom would be envious, then it had to be either gold or ghost rock. But 
Uh, ain't no one found Ghost Rock around these here parts. Well, I think he must have found some Ghost Rock because that looks like Ghost Rock fever if I've ever seen it. I think, uh, I, I think maybe we actually have someone here who might, might know more about it than even I. I don't know, would um, uh, Charlie, Charlie know anything about this? Um, From mining? I mean, I, I would assume to some extent, but do I need to roll? Um, is there like a, a common knowledge? Um, yeah, you can give me a common knowledge at a plus two. Okay. Oh Rigor dear. Raven, Megan is holding, I believe, Franklin's skull. Yes, it was Franklin's skull. Franklin was a small boy of some kind or, or child of some nature yes. <laughs> yes, if you're wondering about this though it is it is made of clay it's from mexico Ooh. and made and yes okay I, I roll is that a seven is that is the blue number the number that it's blue yes so blue okay. Uh, yes, so you rolled a seven. Uh, you also rolled a four, but we take the highest roll. So you rolled a seven, which is not quite a success with a raise, um, but uh, very close. But it is still a success, and you can corroborate what Crystal has found. You you look at this, and um, the thing is, is that there are a lot of hallmarks of Ghost Rock fever here, but there is something beyond that he clearly has had if you kind of look under the fingernails and and some other things and you can clearly tell that there are some deposits of ghost rock dust on him uh and you you know that um he's had exposure to ghost rock and you know that anyone who has had exposure to ghost rock for a prolonged period of time has the potential to develop complications from that including ghost rock fever um so it, you do get that sensation, but you are also um, – there's something nagging in the back. It, you get this too, Crystal, because you looked at him too. There's something that's that doesn't quite add up. It can't just be Ghost Rock Fever. Um, everybody give me a notice roll. Five. Seven. Ooh. One. Three. That's a two. You got a two. Oh, I got a two? Okay. Yeah, the one that's crossed out is the one that's not being gotcha, used. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Five and seven were our successes? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, um, anybody want to re-roll? You can re-roll. Don't forget, you can re-roll. You might get better. Or you might get much, much worse. Hmm. I don't know. I f I'm feeling pretty good about a seven. It would be hard for me to get better. I have a D6 and I rolled a five. <laughs> I mean, you can. You, you, there's two dice that you roll. And if you ace them. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I can spend a Benny, right? Yeah, so, you can spend a Benny. You can and spend we have a Benny. Right? A D8. Yeah. Yeah, if you want, right. do you, are you spending one of your own bennies, or are you taking yeah, one from the one of my own? I okay. got like five of them, so we're we're good Great. here. Yes, you are lucky. Okay, how about a nine? There you go. That's a raise. That's a success with a raise. Okay, so all of you um, hear a twig snap behind you, and um, Charlie, you uh, wheel around first, and. Um, are able to catch the glimpse of um, something shiny that looks like a pickaxe coming out of the woods. And um, you see one person slowly walk out of the woods and they have a pickaxe in their hand. And they have this kind of sallow, grayish skin um, that looks both dusty and decayed. As they walk out, 
you hear more and more and more come out of the woods and they there's probably around 20 of them and they all have their eyes fixed on Crispin and you hear uh Charlie because you got the rays you see every, all of you see these people come out but Charlie you also hear something behind you at this kind of wall that you, you you're kind of surrounded by three sides by basically sheer cliff face and then you have the the forest on the fourth side that is um uh you've got a bunch of people <laughs> um walking out of the forest now blocking your way charlie you spin around and you hear the telltale sign of rocks falling and you look behind you and before your eyes the rocks appear to um split apart and pebbles and gravel kind of fall off and you see an opening that leads into a cave uh open uh into the rock fit the rock wall well now i can't say i've ever seen something like that before and the rest of you uh, notice this now as well oh that is quite odd and that would uh make your job obsolete wouldn't it charlie <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> there's still holes that need to be dug. Uh, all right, no very magic holes digging, and I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> okay. uh, I don't think they liked that joke, uh, Franklin. Um, and uh, she, I thought she's it was going hilarious. <laughs> she's um uh. Yeah, going to say I I I feel like maybe either someone or something wants us to go this way, and it seems like it might be a friendlier ish path. I say we do it. Huh. Yes. Um Crispin and Othello both agree. Um and um you all hightail it back into the mountain as you are being chased by several miners. And let's see if I can get something put together here really quickly. <laughs> uh oh. Um, so we are going to do, um, you know, I don't, here's the thing. I don't want to get started in a combat because we don't have enough time for a combat right now, but, uh, you basically, you run into this cavern. Um, however you are, they are still advancing. They don't seem to be stopping. And, um, several of them have sort of broken out from the pack and are, um, basically upon you. So, when we come in next session, our final session, we will be starting a combat. Uh, and, um, but you will be in the cave, so you're not going to be fighting 20 at once. Uh, you will be fighting, um, however many made it through. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. And we will end it there for the night. Um, mm. But yeah, I want to open it up because this is a learn to play. And we were learning along with you all uh, both how how to run uh, chases and 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 uh, encounters. Uh, but we also did advancements and, and other things. So uh, I am curious if you all who are watching or you all at the table, the virtual table, um, have any questions about uh, about the the show? And thank you, Adventures of Tony, for your for your sub. Uh, we have noted your your reroll has gone to the players, I believe. Yes, the player pool GM or player pool Benny section <laughs> thing. <laughs> uh, so uh, players, you get you get another uh, Benny in your pool that you can use next Hooray! week potentially. Uh, but yeah, 
if anybody has a question so far, we've kind of covered a lot. We've covered a lot over the last few episodes. So yeah, if there's anything that you're curious on, let me know. I'll wait for, I'll wait for chat to, to sort of catch up and think of a question. What about <laughs> catch up mustard? Um, what about you all, you players? Any anything striking you? Mm, mm, off the top of my head. I mean, it all struck me very much all at once. But then, the more we did it, the easier it got. Like the more sense mm -hmm. it made. It was a lot of words on a page, and then actually doing it definitely was. Helpful. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. chases chases are are intimidating, and and in in many cases, it, it's probably easier. I, I wouldn't recommend doing a chase like sort of off uh, the first thing with, especially with a group of new players. Like um, a, a combat is better because you at least learn kind of half of the chase rules when you do a combat. But uh, narratively, it worked out much better for to do a chase now than to do a combat. Um, so so there's that. But but yeah, chases chases always kind of like. Always, we always kind of avoided chases in the past, um, and I never wanted to deal with a chase and you don't have to do a chase. You could do a dramatic task, which we will cover next week. Um, but um, you could you can always do it a different way. You could do, run it as a quick encounter. You can uh, run it as a combat if you want. But the the way the chase rules work is that it gives the opportunity for them to get away, and um, and it gives you the 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 distance and plays with that distance as you go rather than with a combat. Like you're if if you're trying to run it as a combat, you're constantly having to think, okay, how far away am I? Can I hit them with my you know, fist, can I punch them? Can I kick them? Um, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Uh, dramatic tasks can really do a lot of this too, in some ways much simpler, but, um, honestly it's different mechanics. And, uh, the, the nice thing about Savage Worlds is that you have multiple mechanic structures to run different encounters however you want. And um, I really appreciate that. So, um, yeah. Um, cool. Well, awesome. Uh, well, thanks, everybody, for watching. Let's let's go around the horn one more time, and, and y'all tell us where people can find you. Let us start with uh, Nick. All right. Uh, I'm Nick. I am by underscore rogues on Twitter. Uh, just... By Rogues No Underscore here on Twitch and pretty much everywhere else. But every update in my creative career happens on my Twitter. So please go follow me there to know what I'm doing uh, creatively at any given time. <laughs> awesome. And no. Hey, thank you so much for having me. My name is Gnome. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok over at Gnomedic. I do TTRPG things in TTRPG places. And I, if you want to wake up and talk TTRPGs and life in general, uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I run a show over on my Twitch channel called Gnome Brew uh, with Eris Savad as my co-host. And we just kind of like shoot the breeze and, and literally just wake up over a cup of something. <laughs> awesome yeah uh megan hi i'm megan caves um uh I'm, I'm kind of uh the same you can find as nick you can find me on uh all my stuff on twitter at megan caves um uh this week i on thursday have, will be guesting over on todd moonbounce's channel playing deadlands noir um, so that should be fun as I've never gotten to play it before. Nice. So it should be interesting. Yeah, but that's Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, I think. I don't know. Check my Twitter or their channel. Okay. Um, and then Friday, Ladies of D&D, uh, no, Ladies of Lake starts at uh, Ladies of D&D. It's Lasers and Liches D&D. It's basically a 1980s rock band finds themselves in Arthurian fantasy. So um, it should be interesting. 
the cast is a group of people that I know and will probably be nuts. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that starts on Friday. Ladies of D&D is where that is. Um, yeah, beyond that, you can find my um, my production company, Gone Rogue Entertainment at Gone Rogue ENT, um, where I just finished up Harbingers and we'll be on to chapter three next. So I think that's, yeah, that's that's the gist. That's, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Today. That's super yes. exciting. Very cool. Very cool. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you can find me at Gadzook on Twitter or at Dom.Zook on Instagram. Uh, you can also find Saving Throw Show everywhere at Saving Throw Show. Um, literally TikTok. There's, we haven't posted anything. Um, uh, but Instagram, Twitter, whatever. It's mostly for me to look at RPG TikToks. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, go just definitely check out our, our YouTube and, um, if, if you like and catch up on all the things that, that we had, um, I'm going to do a, a little stinger. Uh Oh, as you are in the cave and you begin fending yourselves off. Um, a voice fills the air, which is thick with a, a almost decaying stench. And you Hear this fill your ears as you fight. You're in my home now, and you best be preparing to die. And that's where we will leave it. Franklin? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It sounds a lot like Franklin, huh? Franklin, have you not introduced us to your friends? I'm a little offended. I don't know who that was. I'm crying. I have a family. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Mama, can you hear me? Um catch up on all of our shows on YouTube or even many of them as podcasts, including wildcards. Remember to like comment and subscribe and ring the bell to be notified uh, when new content is posted on the channel. If you enjoyed this show, we have a ton more Savage Worlds content on this channel from Wildcards, Megan's Mysterium Games, uh, Savage 60 Seconds, which are little bite-sized rule component things, videos. They're literally 60 seconds long. There's a lot to watch, but maybe Savage Worlds isn't your thing. Uh, we have a ton of other content on our channel. We have over, let's see, we've been doing this... Uh, it, it'll be eight years in, Ju in Ju on June 23rd. It will be eight years that we've been doing this. So we have a lot of content uh, uh, that you can catch up on. Um, uh, definitely uh, catch up. Uh, watch uh, New Pantheon Academia. They just ended the series. So now's a great time to watch that through. Uh, and um, don't forget, you can join our Exploration Society on Ko-Fi. And uh, you can continue to support us. Remember, if we get 500 brand new subs, uh, we can do shows continually um, without having to worry about any sort of funding or anything like that, all supported by you. We can run things that you want to see and stuff like that. So please do tell your friends um, and, and help support us that way. Uh, and lastly, go over to our Discord and join the conversation um, me and, and other people, uh, in, in the cast and stuff where we, we hang out there, we talk, we chat. Uh, if you've got questions about Savage Worlds or D and D or Pathfinder or mutants and masterminds or whatever the heck you've got questions on, shoot them our way and we will, we will be happily answer or just, you know, shoot the breeze. So mm -hmm. that's, that's it. So uh, thank you all so much. Um, we are going to let me make sure that they are live. OK. They're live. So we are going to go raid Vanna now. 
Uh, so mm-hmm. go go raid Vanna, give her a pew pew, uh, and be nice because she's awesome and she's part of our family. So um, yeah. All right, everybody, have a great week, and we will see you next week for the final episode of Savage Worlds Learn to Play. Bye!